Hello, guys. Hope you're doing okay. Uh, this is another beautiful, beautiful day. I thank God for this day. And um, uh, let me just uh, connect my Facebook so that uh, other people can also check this on Facebook as well. Um, it will really be a wonderful teaching because right now we are actually we are living in the end times. We are we are not even in the end times. We are. <clears throat> excuse me, we are not even in the end times, we are actually in the final seconds uh, in the end times. So I would really, really, really ask uh, if, um, if you're, you're there, you can be able to tell as many people as possible uh, as it was, let me just write the topic, uh, the day of Noah. So, um, I'm actually connecting this to my Facebook so that other people can also be able to check. Uh, so if you're on Facebook as well, you can also check me out, Keith Mwoki on Facebook. And then also you can share to other people. It's, it's not about the views. I'm not interested about the views. What I'm interested about is people getting to hear the message because uh, the time is at hand, you know. The Bible has told us is it's about time. So unless we tell people who are really mixed up, thinking that we have a lot of time, then uh, they will all perish. They will all perish, which is uh, different from what God wanted it to be. So yes, I think on Facebook uh, it's it's live. So guys, um, one thing that I like to say is that. Honestly, we're living in the times of Noah. The Bible has told us that the times of Noah, there were so many things which are happening. And I would like us to uh, be so keen and so uh, so specific on exactly what was happening in the times of Noah. You see, so many people have heard as it was in the times of Noah, but they have never really understood what the Bible meant by saying the times of Noah. And uh, we understand that God destroyed the whole earth in the times of Noah. He had, he, the, there is nothing that uh, was left on the earth except Noah, just a family of eight people. And if God can destroy uh, the whole world that time of Noah and only leaves eight people, the whole world, what makes you think that he cannot destroy everyone? You see, right now you see churches are really full and people are, are, are there and they are saying glory, glory, glory. And uh, not knowing very well, have you ever asked yourself, how comes you, uh, the church is so full and every, every person is like singing the same song, saying the same message, and we are thousands of mega churches. Are all these people in the narrow way? You should ask yourself that question. Are all these people in the narrow way? You should open your eyes and tell yourself there must be something that probably Jesus was saying the way is not as broad as you may think. When you go to a church and you see it's entertaining everything, uh, you see uh, musicians are coming to church, they are wearing earrings, they're wearing chains, they're, they have uh, men and they, 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 they are plated their hair, they are, you know, men looking like women, women looking like men, uh, confusion in, in the places. And you think that, come on, is the norm. You see, people have transformed themselves to be like the world. And that's exactly what the times of Noah were. And they, all these people perished. So we have to learn and open our oh, eyes no. and ask ourselves, how was it in the times of Noah? Okay, so as we check that, um, let me show you something here. I want us to check uh, the book of Luke, Luke 17, uh, 17, 26. Let's just go there. Uh, sometimes I'll be showing on the screen and also I'll be showing, uh, I just be reading here to not to waste a lot of time. Luke 17, 26, it says, and as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the son of man. As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it also be in the days of the son of man. What was happening? They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed all of them. Now, my friend, we have to uh, learn a couple of things and ask ourselves, what was happening? What are the various things 
in a, in a good explanation of the things which are happening in the times of now. And I'm going to give you this. I've written about six different, uh, uh, six different kinds of things that people were doing in the times of Noah, which made them to be destroyed, okay? So now, number one, if you're writing somewhere, in the times of Noah, there was a lot of sexual immorality and perversion. Perversion is people just being so dirty in a way that you cannot even explain what is this. Right now, we are seeing the same happening. We are seeing uh, people so pervert, you know, perverted, like homosexuals, bestiality, pedophiles, you're seeing all these things are happening. And it's like the, the world is embracing the same. Do you know in the time of Noah, the same was happening? The same was happening. There was a lot of sexual immorality and perversion. Perversion means what? It's, it's basically uh, people are, are, are too much deep into some things that you cannot even explain. Let me also show uh, something. Do you know in the times of Noah, the fallen angels were actually sleeping with human beings. <laughs> they were they were ha having sexual uh, immorality with the with, with the human beings, and that is one of the things which really agitated God so much because they were changing the nature of human beings. Just imagine a, a spirit, a fallen angel, mating with a human being. What do they produce? some cyborg, some, something that you cannot be able to explain what it is. Now, if a fallen angel is already a spiritual being, is a small God in some way. Now, did God come to save small gods? So <laughs> did God come to save spirits? No, Jesus himself became in the form of man and in the form of God. So if you're another creature, a fallen angel, uh, you may not be able to understand who you are. And that's why I think God was really agitated with these people. And he decided all of them, I'm getting away. I'm, I'm destroying everyone. And let's just see this in Genesis 6, 2 to 3. It says, Genesis 6, 2 to 3, uh, it, it says something here. Uh, it says, and uh, uh, Genesis 6, sorry, I was in 2. Genesis 6, uh, from verse 2 to 3, it says, uh, and it uh, actually, let's start from verse 1. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them. Now, people have started multiplying, like the way, have you realized in the, in the 20th century, all of a sudden, people have multiplied from 1900s, people have started becoming so many like the world is really full. So people are multiplying within, I don't know how many years we are, we are raising a billion, a billion, a billion of people, okay? The same way like it was in the days of Noah. And verse two, that the sons of God, now who are the sons of God? These are the fallen angels. You can uh, go and refer to, uh, you can go and refer to, uh, to Job. You remember when Job was uh, uh, writing and he was saying, uh, the time when, uh, during the foundations of this world, when the sons of God shouted for joy. So the sons of God, are the fallen angels, they were shouting for joy when the foundations of the world were being created. That's that time even no, uh, Job was not there. And there was no one else. So, so just long story short, the sons of God are the fallen angels. That the sons of God saw that the daughters of men that they they were fair and they took them wives of all which they chose. You see, they they took these people and they made them wives. So the fallen angels were, were, were sleeping with human beings. So what were they raising? Some things that uh, <laughs> nobody can even say what they are. Verse three, and the Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with man for that he's, he, he, he also is flesh, yet his day shall be 120 years. So God was agitated and he said, I will not always strive with man. Now striving, what does the word strive mean? Striving is basically like, I'm trying to pull you, you're trying to pull me. I'm trying to pull you, you're trying to pull me. So God was saying, I will not keep on pulling you to me. I'm always pulling you to myself and you don't want, you're always running away. I pull you to myself, you run away. I pull you to myself, you run away. And my, 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 myself, I'll not always be striving with men. What I'll be doing is that you, you have only 120 years to live. Now, remember, do you remember that Noah built the ark for 120 years? Is this not familiar? 
So from the time that God got peace with man because of him changing himself and making himself, you know, another creature through mating with the fallen angels, all of a sudden the days started being counted. And 120 years, Noah was building the ark. And he was preaching to people all the time. He's telling them, you guys, repent, change, 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 please repent. And he's nailing nails in that ark and he's saying, you guys, can't you see I'm nailing something here? Can't you see? Please, God is going to destroy this earth with flood. But people never wanted to listen until the last nail on the, on the ark. And then people got inside Noah and all the animals and his family, they got in. And people were just there looking. They were just there looking, just the same way people are doing right now. People are just looking, and others are saying, repent, repent, Jesus is coming soon. Jesus, is Hey, come on, get into the ark, because the ark is the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is here for you. Believe, believe, get saved. You don't want to hear. You just look and you say, ah, Keith, and your false stories, eh? keep on posting on Facebook. Keep on telling us these things. We don't care. Jesus is not coming soon. I've had so many people say, ah, you, you're just a scared guy. Jesus is not coming soon. Uh, do whatever you want. That is exactly what Noah was doing. Until the flood came and it is swept all of them away. All right? Now, look at this. Those fallen angels, <laughs> God judged them as well. Those fallen angels who slept with the human beings, God judged them. Now, let's see what was the judgment that God did to these fallen angels. Look at this. Something so profound, uh, I think is in the book of Jude. If you, have, if you know the book of Jude, eh? mm, just before Revelation, the last book before Revelation is called the book of Jude, Okay. And they're saying what really happened to these fallen angels who slept with the human beings. It says in the book of Jude 1 uh, from verse 6 to 7, it says, And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, they never kept their first estate. Where was the first estate? You see, uh, this world that we're living is a uh, heaven as well where the the, the uh, i think this is the third heaven or the first heaven i don't know how to mix with that but there are three kinds of heavens now this we are living is a heaven then we have the second heaven out there in the universe in the skies where they say oh aliens all those things eh? that is where we have the second heaven and then yes and then we have the third heaven where god lives up there up there so these people the these fallen angels they left their first estate which was where they were living in the in the skies somewhere there not where God lives, in the sky, somewhere there. And they came and they mated with the daughters of men. Now listen to this. Uh, it says, and the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness into the judgment of the great day. All right? So God took all those fallen angels and he put them into hell. Now, there are other kinds of fallen angels who are still roaming around who did not sleep with the daughters of men. They are still roaming around. Uh, some of the demons that are always in operation right now. But the ones who slept with the daughters of men, all of them were taken to hell and they were bound with chains in hell. And they are, they are there uh, waiting for the judgment of the great day. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, listen to that word, and are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal light or of eternal fire. You see, Sodom and Gomorrah, they went for strange flesh. What, what really happened with, in Sodom and Gomorrah? When Lot, uh, you remember the two angels, they came to tell Lot, hey, come out of Sodom and Gomorrah. And these people, they wanted to sleep with those angels. They were so much and they wanted to rape even those angels. They were so evil just the same way, like in the days of Noah. They were so evil. They wanted to rape those angels and, and, and God blinded all of them. And of course, the story, you know, Lot came out and after he came out, they tested the fire. It rained fire with brimstone you know it rained, it rained fire with brimstone and you can just go there and and understand and read the passage for yourself so the bible says this was to be like an example of what will be now if sodom and gomorrah was an example <laughs> think about how it's going to be in that time when jesus comes back 
and you're thrown to hell, my friend, because you never wanted to listen. You never wanted to hear anything. So in the times of Noah, there was a lot of sexual immorality and perversion. It was there so much, just the same way it's happening right now. People are talking about LGBTQ. Others are saying, uh, you know, the rights of the, even, even we have seen leaders who are pedophiles. We have seen people in bestiality, people are sleeping with animals and people are so, they, they are doing all the perverse things and others, they're even uh, sleeping with demons. By the way, have you realized if you go on YouTube and you search people with six fingers, you know, these giants who were born, they had six fingers, uh, hand, you know, the hands had six fingers, the legs had six fingers, and they were tall, six, six feet tall. Uh, is, is, is that one making some sense? Six and six and just go on youtube we'll find such weird stuff i'm not saying those are fallen angels those who are there but but this one gives us an idea that these things are happening actually it said that uh, in every 500 people i don't know in which country or where that there are people with six toes and six fingers in them that is exactly <laughs> what we are seeing the bible telling us how the giant looked look like and these things are happening and you hear people confessing of weird things and other people uh, in demonic stuff. And, and you really ask yourself, how are these people operating in this way? Now, that is the first thing, sexual immorality and perversion. Number two, there was a lot of fallen angel activity in the times of Noah. There was a lot of fallen angel activity. Now, when we go to Genesis 6-4, let's go back there and we see Genesis 6-4. It tells us about a lot of fallen angel activity in the times of Noah, just like we're witnessing nowadays when they're always talking about UFO, alien, uh, I don't know, all those things that they are saying, hey, we have seen some alien, we have seen that. There's a lot of fallen angels. Those are fallen angels. Those are demons. When you hear their uh, uh, aliens, come on, my friend, those are demons, okay? Genesis 6, 4, it says, huh? uh, there were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men and they bear children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. They were not human beings. They were men of renown. They were just some crazy name that they were given, men of renown. What are really that? That's another, that's another uh, um type of thing it's a cyborg It's something that you cannot be able to explain so there was a lot of fallen angel activities whereby we saw the nephilim the uh, or also called the giants they were born from those interaction between the fallen angels and the daughters of men okay so the same thing is also happening right now we are seeing the ufos we are seeing the aliens and people are talking about these things and people are mixing up have you heard this have you heard that you see all, all those kind of things and you don't ask yourself, are we not in the times of Noah? Let me show you this thing. Let me show you 2 Peter 2, 4 to 5. It tells us something here. 2 Peter 2, 4 to 5. It tells us something here. And I want you to listen carefully and you'll be able to see we're in the times of Noah. Okay, 2 Peter 2, 4 uh, to around 5, it says, for if God spared not the angels that sinned. You remember I've just spoken about the fallen angels? who were not spared, they were taken immediately after that, they were taken to hell, they were chained and thrown to hell, and the other angels were left, the, the fallen angels were left still roaming, but he was so agitated about the fallen angels who had slept with the daughters of men, so God chained them into hell. Now, listen to what God is saying here. Uh, 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 4, it says, For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment, all right, to be reserved unto judgment. Let me mute these guys here. Uh, uh, let me mute these guys here. And uh, <clears throat> listen to this. If God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment and spared not the old world, remember, but saved Noah, the eighth person, preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly and turning the cities of Sodom. Remember the other story of Sodom? And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes 
condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly. Now, God, if he did all this, this is what the Bible is saying. If God did not spare those angels, if God did not spare even the ones in the times of uh, uh, the, the people in the times of uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, verse 7, and delivered just Lot. Listen, if God did not spare, he only delivered Lot vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked for that righteous man dwelling among them in seeing and hearing vex his righteous soul from the day with their unlawful deeds my friend if god did not spare people in that time of noah he did not spare those fallen angels he did not spare those people in the times of lord what makes you think that is going to spare the world today just because um the church is, is full and everybody is sinning. Everybody is a liar. We all sin. We are all corrupt. We are all, come on, God cannot destroy everyone. We are so many. That is exactly what people were saying in the times of Noah. They were saying, we are so many. We are so many. We, we can be destroyed. What happened? All of them, God spared only eight people. And the same thing he can do as well. So if you're thinking that he, will, he cannot destroy, then you're lying to yourself. And this is a great, great teaching. If you stay all through this teaching, you're going to open up your eyes and you're going to understand another picture of where we are living right now. Okay, so God, we see he punished these angels. He cast them all into hell. And those which uh, did, not, uh, did not commit that act, they're still roaming, but they still their judgment is coming for those fallen angels. Let's also see, when will these fallen angels who are chained and set down, when will they, who, what is their fate? What is really going to happen? Let's see, the book of Revelation 9, 1, the book of Revelation 9, I want to show you these fallen angels who slept with the daughters of men and they were cast into chains in the hell and they are full of anger and they are still there waiting and looking and, you know, looking forward and asking when, 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 when. This is what is going to happen. Revelation 9, 1 to 5, it says, uh, 9, 1 to 5, it says, and the fifth angel sounded. This is in the time of tribulation. This is what is going to happen. And the fifth angel sounded. And I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth. And to him was given the key to the bottomless pit. Have you heard the bottomless pit? Just take a study. Just go to YouTube eh, and go and type sun, C-E-R-N. And see the kind of portal these people are trying to open. It's in uh, Switzerland, between Switzerland and France, I, I think. France and Switzerland, somewhere there. Just go and see what they're opening. They want to open uh, a bottomless pit. Uh, 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 they, they call it the dark hole. They call it, I don't know what they're trying to call. They want to do some, some an experiment of a big bang theory kind of thing. They want to blow it up and then they see how can, if they can join the spiritual world with the natural world, because Satan is fooling them that they live forever. And this is what they are doing. Now look, exactly, this is what they are going to open. And it's already in place. Go to YouTube, type C-R-E-N, sun. Just see what they're opening. Just see the project which is going right now. Uh, just see what the, the, the project which is going right now. And you'll be able to understand. All right? You'll be able to understand what is happening. Because these things are real. These things are real. Now, let's see. Was given the key to the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit. And there arose a smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. Okay. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth. And unto them was given power as scorpions of the earth have power. Okay. And it was commanded that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads, okay? Now, these kinds of, uh, these things which will come from the bottomless pit, I want you to see how they're looking like. Look at the features of how these uh, things they look like. Now, go to verse seven and see the shape and tell me if those things is, is not what sp was spoken in the times of Noah. The, the fallen angels who gave birth to, you know, slept with the daughters of men, and they gave birth to some things that you cannot explain. Look here, verse 7. And the shapes of the locust were like unto horses prepared unto battle, and on their heads were it were 
were as it were crowns like gold and their faces were as the faces of men. Is this making some sense? Their faces were as the faces of men, but they have some things which are really weird, okay? And they had hair as the hair of women. Look at that. They somehow look like human beings and their teeth were as the teeth, teeth of lion. You, you remember, you see how vampire things they try to show you? They, they have some vampire kind of uh, teeth, okay? Verse nine, and they had breastplates as it were breastplates of iron and the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running into battle. They had tails as uh, like unto scorpions and there were stings in their tails and their power was to hurt men five months. Now look at those. God has prepared those people, they'll open that, whatever they'll open, the bottomless pit, they call it the black hole, they call it CRN, you know, sun, they call it whatever, they will open that thing. But it will hurt, that is the time that Bible says, the, the men's hearts will fail seeing what they have done because of what they have done. They, their hearts will fail. Like there will be so much trouble and then they will be like asking. And even this big, big guys that you're always seeing and they're pretending and uh, you know, we, we rule the world, 1% of the world. Those guys, the Bible says they will enter. <laughs> they will enter in halls and caves. Eh? And then they will ask the mountains and the rocks, please fall on us, fall on us because we rather die than, but <laughs> death will flee from them. They'll be trying to die, but there is no death because now you have opened uh, what you wanted. Okay, you did not want to die, yeah? fine. Now we are here. They will try to die, but now they have opened the spiritual and the natural. Okay, there is no death. Fine. You will not die for that time because I, I think that's how God has, has put it. It will be like that. So uh, you will be there and you'll be asking yourself, what did I do? What actually did I do? And uh, let me show you who will be the leader of these guys. The leader of these people will be called Apollyon. Uh, let's read verse five. And to them, it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion uh, when he striketh man. Okay. Uh, verse 11. Sorry, I was looking for this. Verse 11, Revelation 9, 11, it says, and they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon but in the Greek tongue has his name Apollyon. Now, just check the documentary that I've told you on a, a YouTube. Eh? Just go and type Sun, C-E-R-N, okay? What they are opening in Switzerland right now and see the whole documentary, what they are doing and the place where they are, they are put this, uh, the, the, the Sun thing is exactly where there is the altar of the God Apollyon. Is this really making sense? Is it is are these things adding up? Exactly where the, there is the what they call the, the altar of the god Apollyon is where they are creating this uh, sun, C E R N, okay, in Switzerland. Just go and check on YouTube and, and you'll be able to see. Don't say it's my words and Keith uh, is creating some story. Go and see for yourself. And they have the goddess Shiva, you know, the, the goddess of destruction. And th there's a lot of cult in that thing. When you look at it, you'll just know these guys are opening what they want to call the black hole and they'll get in and they'll never get out. Have you seen how much uh, Hollywood nowadays is, is trying to do a lot of fiction uh, movies? You see the ancient uh, Atl uh, Atlantis city, you hear some, uh, the, the, the lost uh, city, the water. It's like they're trying to show there's another world that people can go, which is so beautiful, which they want to open through their black hole and this kind of stuff. And that is exactly where they're going to mess up themselves. All right. Exactly. That's exactly what they're going to mess up themselves. And uh, we are seeing the same activity was happening in the times of Noah. It was happening in the time of Noah. There was a lot of fallen angel activity in the time of Noah. Now let's go to number three. What else was happening in the time of Noah? There was a persistent wickedness and the evil, a persistent wickedness and the evil. People are so evil. They were so evil, just the same way like you see nowadays. People just hate each other. They don't love each other. They, 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 they don't care. You know, let's go to the book of Genesis. 
Let's see, what was it in the time of Noah concerning this evil thing, persistent evil, all right? Genesis uh, 6, verse 5, it says, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Is it happening right now? Continually, everybody, if, if you talk to somebody and you tell them, hey, can we hang out? The next thing they will tell you is, can we grab uh, a beer? We grab some, uh, you know, we, we call some chicks. We call, you know, their mind, he will not tell you like, let's sit somewhere and have some lunch and discuss the word of God or let's hear what God has to their thoughts, the thoughts of people nowadays is evil continually. When you sit down with people, all they can say is evil stuff. They don't care about godly things. All that they care is let it be the way it will be. You know, you live only once, YOLO. But remember, you don't live once. After you die, there is another life. And you're going to face now the actual life. What, what right now we are living is just an example of life. The life that we are really going to live is after we die. The moment you close your eyes and you're done, now your life starts. For those who think that, hey, you live only once, fine. Do as you want. Remember, do you know the motto of the satanic church is do as thy will. Do as you want. Come on, bro. Do as you want. Go and check Jay-Z wearing those t-shirts and uh, hoodies written, do as you want. Because this Satan is, they don't care. They're only lying to you that you live once. Man, you don't live once. You don't live once, man. You're just starting your life right now. And after this, the Bible says, it is appointed unto man once to die. And after that, judgment. Okay? So, that these people, their thoughts of heart was only evil continually. And verse six, and it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him at his heart. He, God was grieved. He felt bad. Why are these people only thinking about evil things? They don't care about anything else. They don't care about seeking me. They don't care about listening. They don't care anything. They don't care about the gospel. They're just saying, ah, come on, as long as I go to church, you know, Church has been reduced to just some meeting place where people can meet on Sunday. You know, they go and have some brunch. And after, you know, after the church service, you can have some coffee and tea and mandazi and catch up with people. Others are going to look for wives and husbands in those churches. It's, it's, it's been reduced to just a meeting spot. And pastors, they are there selling whatever they want to sell, building construction uh, stories. And uh, you see the Matangazo thing. Announcements are too many more even than the word of God. People just will explain, hey, we have this, then we need the money for this. We need money for that. We it's been reduced to a trading center. Most of the churches nowadays, there's no <laughs> action of God which is happening. <clears throat> And people, they're only thinking about themselves. What is in there for me? I've seen churches, pastors fighting. Pastors fighting. Hey, you took my members. No, you, these are my members. Now, Paul, the apostle Paul asked, did Paul die for you? Why are you fighting? Did Apollo, uh, I mean, Apollos uh, die for you? Was I, were you baptized in the name of Paul? Then why are you fighting you guys? What is a church? The church is a body of Christ. It's not a building. It's not a building. What you see, the building is just a local body of Christ in one place, the local body of Christ in one place. But we are all one body. We are all one body. We drink into one spirit. We, and if one member suffers, we all suffer. If something happens to one, if one rejoices, we all rejoice. Then why are we arguing? Why are you this and this and this? The only thing which you're supposed to argue, unless if you're arguing and saying, this pastor is fake, is giving a wrong word. Because the Bible says, Look, uh, um, uh, uh, check those who are, are, are pulling out from people from the true doctrine and expose them. If you're exposing someone for giving a wrong doctrine, then that's allowed in the Bible. Even the Apostle Paul, he stood Peter on the face and he told him, Peter, you'll be judged. If you keep on telling people what you're telling them, that they have to be circumcised so that they can uh, be saved, you will be judged for this thing. Paul stood. He stood face to face and, and told Peter, you will be judged. And Peter is a guy who even wrote uh, uh, some parts of the Bible. And you, you are there with your, with your commentary on Facebook. And you think, oh, don't touch the anointed. <laughs> Let me just continue. So there was persistent wickedness. Now, let's see. <clears throat> In today's world, do we have the same happening? 
Revelation 9, 21. These people, they think only always wrong things. Revelation 9, 21. Let's see what it says. Neither repented they of their murders, nor their sorceries, nor their fornication, nor their thefts. You see? These people in the last days, they will not, they will not repent. Why, 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 why is God wanting them to repent? God himself, he sent so many plagues in the last days. And uh, like, right now we are seeing so many things happening. We are seeing a fire in California, in Oregon. We are seeing fires. We are seeing earthquakes. We are seeing uh, tsunamis. We are seeing uh, deaths in so many natural calamities. And instead of people repenting, they are saying, Come on, come on, this God is global warming. It's global warming. This God, come on, God is sending all these things so that you guys can repent and you're keeping there. You don't want to repent of your what? Of your murders, you're still killing people. Of your sorceries, of your fornication, of your thefts. Every day, stealing is, is like the norm nowadays. Corruption, look at Kenya every day, two billion goes. You close your eyes, you open every morning, two billion goes. People are stealing like no man's business. I rather steal, I rather do everything as long as I have the money. The money is my God. These people will not repent. These are the last days, my guys. These are the last days, man. These are exactly last days. And I would like to ask you if you're on Facebook and you're watching, kindly you can share so that many people can hear this. I'm not after views. Don't think I'm telling you to share so that I can gain anything. I just want people to hear what is happening. What is happening so that they may change and so that they may be saved at least. So if you're somewhere, you can be able to share. Share to other people. Let them see. Let them hear what is happening. Okay, so persistent wickedness and evil will be happening in the last days. Let's see also 2 Timothy 3, 1. What does it tell us about this last day? 2 Timothy 3, 1 to 5. It says, this know also that in the last days, perilous times, perilous times shall come. In the last days, there'll be so many perilous times. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Is this happening today? People love themselves. I don't care as long as it's me, me, me. People are always after me. They don't care about their brothers. They don't care about their sisters. They don't care about their friends. They are seeing people are getting, uh, they're, they're being lost and things are happening. They don't care. It's me, 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 me. Covetous, boasters. Are you seeing the way people are boasting nowadays? On YouTube, on Instagram, people are all after showing their money, their wealth, their cars. They don't care. They just see me, see who I am, see where I work, see what I do, see my fleet of cars, my fleet of houses. See, 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 people just want to boast. They are proud. I've even heard about the gay pride. What are they being proud of? Because they are they're, they're homosexuals? What's, what are they proud about? Because uh, anything to be proud about, you know, this gay stuff, anything to be proud about them? Nothing. Nothing. They are reprobates. Blasphemers. People are blaspheming the name of God every day. Anytime you just uh, uh, see something happen and you say, oh my God, oh my God. over there. And there's no sense you're blaspheming the name of God. Have you watched movies the way people curse with the name of Christ? When they do something wrong, you see a Jesus Christ. You hear Je Jesus is being used like a curse word nowadays. That's exactly the last days. Disobedient to parents. It's happening right now. Disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection. Have you realized people have no natural affection? They are going for strange flesh. People are get men are looking for men. Women are looking for women. Other people are looking for pedophiles. Others are looking for uh, uh, animals to sleep with them. Others, they, 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 I, I don't know what's really happening with the world. People have no natural affection. You see, this is the last days, the days of Noah. Truth breakers, false accusers, people are accusing others falsely. They say, this person did this, and you know absolutely he did nothing, and you accuse him. Incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. These days, when you want to mess up with everybody, just tell them that you're good. Hey, bro, I don't see that one is good. They'll tell you, hey, today, nowadays, you're deputy Jesus. That's what they call people, eh? Keith, you're pretending nowadays to be deputy Jesus, eh? That's what they are saying. They don't care. 
They're just saying, you are unholy. You don't tell us anything. Because, look, the Bible is saying, these people, these people, they despise those that are good, okay? Traitors. How many traitors do we have nowadays? So many. Hardy, high-minded, you know, high-minded. Everybody, you know, the neck is always like this, looking, looking down upon other people, okay? Lovers of pleasures than lovers of God. I don't need to explain that. You already know that people love a pleasure. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Okay, from such turn away. Have you seen people have a form of godliness nowadays? People look as if they love God. Somehow they, they have a form of godliness, but they really deny the power. Where is the power? The power is found in the blood of Jesus Christ. Have you seen most churches nowadays? They'll only tell you, come on, just, just, just repeat the sinner's prayer. Forget about the blood of Jesus. Just repeat this, you know, just say Jesus come into my heart and oh, yeah, come on. Where is the blood? The Bible tells us in Romans 3.25 that in whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood. We have to have faith in the blood of Jesus Christ. But then right now, people don't want to believe in the blood of Jesus Christ for the remission of their sins. They just want to say some mantras. Others, they say, oh, I was baptized. I know I'm going to heaven. You will go to hell with your baptism. There is no place where the Bible says baptism will make anyone get to heaven. Nothing. Those are just <laughs> because you've never read the Bible. You're as lost as you could ever think. You're so lost that if you wake up one day, do you know the funny thing about people? Many people right now who try to argue, God this, God that, no, come on, God is not coming anytime soon. Actually, there's no God. The Bible tells us a fool says in his heart, there is no God. If you say there is no God, then you're a big fool. You're a big reprobate fool because this time you're trying to say there's no God and you can see the evidence of everything, the evidence of creation, the evidence of everything. How, how can you say there is no God? How can you just wake up and say, God does not exist? Look at these people who call themselves atheists. They're not atheists. They are God is themselves. They think that they are the God. And let me tell you, you will be judged. The reason people don't want to accept that there is a God is because they don't want the punishment of doing sinful things. The reason people don't want to admit there's something called sin is because they know their conscience inside them. They know there is a God. And God will judge men on them on that day. And the reason they deny God is so that I will not have anyone to judge me. Furthermore, if there's no God, then I'll not have any judgment. Because their deeds are evil. They are wicked. And any wicked person, any evil person, he wants to stay in the darkness. They hate light. Why? Because their deeds are evil. And they know God is going to judge them one day. And they know back in their minds, they can pretend, they can lie, they can laugh about it. But one day they know they will be judged because God has said it. And it is very true. All right. So this end times, many believers will be deceived and they'll follow the beast. They will, you know, all those things will be happening and uh, they'll be there and wondering, hey, what's really happening to me? Perilous times, they will come. Perilous times, bad times, they will come. OK. So number four, we see there'll be a lot of violence. In the days of Noah, there was a lot of violence, corruption and murder. Is this happening today? In the days of Noah, there was violence, corruption, and murder. That is number four. Now, let's see. Do we see anywhere where that was happening in the times of Noah? Genesis 6, 11, It tells us about the times of Noah. Genesis 6, 11, It tells us, <clears throat> uh, 6 verse 11, the, the earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. The earth was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth and behold, it was corrupt for all the flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. Are you seeing the same cor uh, corruption nowadays? Corruption from the, the, the general corruption. People are corrupt. They don't care. They're just doing the opposite. God says one thing. They say, uh, it, it's like people are looking. What is God saying uh, today? Huh? God is saying people go this way. Now I have to go the opposite way. People are just looking exactly directly opposite of what God is saying, and they go the opposite. That's how people, that's how their minds are corrupt. They are so corrupt. 
until you know there's a point of corruption that you can get into that you lose your mind that now even if you're told anything you can't get it you you're thinking that you're the one who doesn't understand no but i can show you evidence i show you everything but then you still look at me and tell me kate you're the one who is not understanding but i'm showing you come on it's here the bible is saying it's not my words it's here I can take you to the website and show you this is what these people want to do to us. And then you still wake up and say, mm, no, I'll go and take it. They go to those websites. They are there. They are saying how people have died. Everything is, is being shown clear and clean. And you're there saying, mm, I don't care. You know, you know, you know, people are so much asleep. Have you ever noticed one thing that when you're asleep, you never notice that you're asleep until when you wake up, that is the time you realize, Oops, God gracious, I was asleep. I was asleep all this time. If I try to talk to you when you're asleep, can you hear me? Nothing. I'll just be bubbling and telling and speaking. I'm there on your ears, but you're dead asleep. You can hear nothing. The moment you wake up, that's the time that you'll realize, oops, whoops, whoops, I was really asleep. Many people are awake. I mean, they're asleep. And that's why Jesus says us, stay sober, stay vigilant. Your adversary, the devil, walks like a roaring lion looking on whom to devour. And you, you're asleep instead of watching. Stay watching. These things you've been told, they will happen. But you, you're there, you're asleep, you don't care. You're just saying, let it be the way it will be. You know, it is what it is. It's okay. It, it's okay. Perilous times will come. So, uh, I mean, uh, there's a lot of corruption, corruption happening. That was, that happened in the times of Noah. Corruption, it was in all there. Let's see. Will the same be happening when uh, Jesus will be about to come in the end times? Revelation 6, verses 3 to 4. Revelation 6, uh, 3 to 4, it tells us about this. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, come and see. All right. And there went out another horse that was red. Listen to this. And power was given him that he sat thereon to take peace from the earth and that they should kill one another. And that there, and there was given unto him a great sword. Are you seeing violence, corruption and murder? In the last days, there will be a lot of murder. People will be beating each other, you know, killing each other, killing each other. They don't care. Are you seeing uh, nowadays if you check uh, the news? In every five, you know, mentions of news, four of them are about crime and murder and someone killed their mother, another one killed their grandmother, another one killed their child, another one killed a neighbor. Oh, it's all about murder, 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 murder from morning to evening and corruption. Six, um, 600, six million gone, six billion gone, whatever gone. And this person corruption charge, this one, it, violence. This one was beating another person and these are, News today is like you're going to, is like you're reading an obituary uh, uh, newspaper. It's all murder, 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 so and so who died. It's like when you go to watch news, it's like an obituary newspaper. People are talking about murders and, and the violence. And these are the times of Noah. We are living in the times of Noah, my friend. Don't wait for another, uh, another Noah time. People only don't want to accept because they know, they know their deeds are evil. They don't want to accept and they know the Bible is true, and it has never lied to anyone, okay? Let's see this. Matthew 24, verse 7. What does the Bible say about the end times, and how will people be, be like? Matthew 24, <clears throat> Matthew 24, uh, verse 7. It tells us about this. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. Are we seeing nations rising against uh, nations, kingdom against other kingdoms? Are you seeing what Israel and Syria they are fighting? Are you heard about Turkey and I don't know who they are fighting? Uh, this country is fighting that. US is fighting with Russia. Um, um, India is fighting with China. The rumors of war every every place. People are just like war, 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 war. Your nation against nation, kingdom against rumors and wars and other things. You're seeing Syria and uh, Afghanistan, Afghanistan. Iraq. People are fighting all over. We are in the end times. We are in the end times. If only, if you don't see we are in the end times, you're, you're just lying to yourself. You're just only being, <laughs> deceiving yourself. There's nothing as big as deceiving yourself. 
let's see also <clears throat> what also will happen, especially to the Christians. Christians, you will face it rough. This is the time which is coming. For those who are lying to Christians and telling them, oh, a revival is coming. Oh, all of us, the seven, mantle, seven mountain mandate. I hear they are saying, calling it seven mountain mandate, something like that, that the world is going to change to be a better place. The church will be one. These are fal false people who are just lost and their minds are lost and they are on a strong delusion. That's why they are saying that. Listen. This is Jesus. He said how it will be in the times of the end. Show me. Where do we see that thing of uh, there'll be uh, people, you know, all these good times. It said that the world will wax cold and cold. Let's see. Matthew 24, uh, 9 to 10. It says, then they shall deliver you up to be afflicted. You see, you Christian, you true Christian, this is what's coming for you. You will be delivered to be afflicted. All right. And they shall kill you. They will kill you, you Christian. Okay. And you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And they shall, and then many shall be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. Are you seeing that one happening? People are hating one another. They are, they are betraying one another. You know, Christians who are once Christians, they are no longer Christians. And see this. And many false prophets shall rise and deceive many. Are you seeing them coming up right now? They're saying, oh, that uh, you cannot go to heaven except with, I had a prophet of war. He was telling people that, hey, you know, you cannot go to heaven without me. Just go on my Facebook, Keith Mwoki, my, my account. Just scroll down on my other videos there. You will see that video with his own mouth. Saying that people think they will go to heaven, but they will not go unless they go through me. Now, is our war the Jesus now? Is he Jesus now? He's the one now. He's now become the way. <laughs> False prophet. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. The people who have always been, oh, my brother, my sister, I go and visit you. I bring you some uh, food. Uh, you know, we care about each other. Brother, brother, we hug each other. The love of many will wax cold because of iniquity. People will be lovers on themselves. They hate each other. They blaspheme each other. They do uh, bad things to each other. And then the love of many will grow cold. Why? Because if somebody is uh, beating on you, is, uh, is uh, accusing you falsely, is doing wrong things to you, and is a brother in, in Christ, in church, probably, because if you're really a brother in Christ, you would not do that. You're a deceived fella. So if you, someone does that to you and they, you used to hug each other, you are good friends and they betray you, then your love to them will grow cold. That's exactly how it's going to be. People will love themselves so much than the others and then the, the love of many shall wax cold, okay? So we are seeing that one being explained very, very well concerning corruption, violence, and murders, which was happening in the days of Noah and is happening even right now. So we have to know that for sure, we are in the last days. Let's see verse, uh, the, the fifth thing which was happening in the times of Noah. There was mass compromise and deception, mass compromise and deception. Now, what is the compromise? Compromise is basically, uh, you know, doing something like, uh, it's, it's like you, you, you move an inch for the, you know, in a bad way for the, for the sake of, you know, community, sake of, you know, uh, just not to make others angry and stuff. There was a lot of mass compromise and people compromise themselves. Instead of staying pure, the way God wanted them to be, they compromise themselves. And we see this one in Genesis 6, 7 to 8. Genesis 6, 7 to 8, it tells us about this compromise. People really, really compromise themselves. Let me put this off. Uh, uh, People really, really compromise themselves. They, they did not want to, to do what was right. Uh, Alvin, you can put off your microphone, please. Uh, okay. I don't know if you can hear me. Please put off your microphone so that uh, it may not make noise. Uh, Alvin, Alvin, please, if you can hear me. Uh, Mike, 
that is not going off. Alvin, please, if you can hear me, please put up the, your microphone. Huh? Now, listen to this. Let me just continue. I hope you will hear me. I, I don't know. I don't know why, why, why this one is not, I uh, cannot. Anyway, all in all, let me show you something here. Mass compromise and deception. Uh, Genesis 6, 7 to 8, it says, Genesis 6, 7 to 8, it says, uh, and the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth. I will destroy man whom I've created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and creeping thing and the faults of the earth, for it repented me that I've made them. And Noah found grace in the eyes of, of the Lord. Now look at this verse. Look at this verse. There was mass compromise. Everybody in the world at that time compromised except Noah. There was a big compromise that time except Noah. Only Noah himself and the family of, you know, them, eight of them, they are the only ones who stayed and they said, we will not do, we will not compromise ourselves. We will follow exactly what the Bible says. And God was happy with them. God, Noah found grace. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Why did he find grace? Because he did not compromise himself. He did not go like the other people. He did not uh, do things like the other people are doing. Are we seeing compromise nowadays? Are we seeing compromise nowadays? Let's go to 2 Thessalonians and we see if there's this uh, compromise. 2 Thessalonians 2, 3. Mm, 2 Thessalonians 2, uh, verse 3. It says this. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling, falling away first, and that the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, all right? So there is a falling away. People are falling away from the truth. People are going away from the truth of the gospel. They don't want to hear the gospel. They are going away, away, away. And there is another falling away which is coming, and I'll be speaking about this just Immediately we finish this. The, the, I'm just remaining with a few couple of uh, verses. And then I will tell you the great falling away, which people are falling away in a big way, big bang. And they will fall away. Thousands of Christians will fall away. And this will just, will no longer be a mystery. You see, people just look at this verse and they say, oh, this is the mystery. The, minist the mystery of in iniquity does already work. I will explain to you what is that mystery of iniquity. Just hold on. Just stay with me because this is really, really important. Also, let's look at, again, mass compromise and deception. All right. The Bible tells us in uh, the book of Matthew 24, Matthew 24 uh from verse 11 and many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many okay there will be a lot of massive deception we are seeing i don't need to explain i already explained before massive deception is happening all right now let me see let me see if i have a, a verse in revelation which i can show you concerning this mass deception uh, revelation 13 3 Revelation 13, verse uh, 3 to 4. It tells us about this <laughs> mass compromise and deception. People will be fooled. Even people in church, especially if you attend, if you if your church is a mega church, my friend, <laughs> look left, right, and center and ask yourself, am I, am I really in the right place? Because if the Bible says broad is the way and you're in a, this mega, mega church where they don't really care as long as you're, you know, as long as you come to church and uh, you know you give your tithes everything we are all family whether you have your sins it's okay come come we don't care we, we don't want to hurt the people have you seen the joy lost in kind of uh, churches those the, the joy lost in the other day was being asked uh, do you think um, gays uh, are uh, christians he said you know I'm, I'm not really sure i'm not really sure P probably god knows for me it's just to to tell them that god loves them and I think they'll be accepted. That just go and see false prophet uh, Joy Austin. If you follow those fellas and uh, TD Jakes, I, I don't I don't care about speaking their names because the Bible tells us expose these chatterlands. They are lying to people and they are picking people and sending them to hell instead of sending them to heaven. And that's why Jesus never even uh, uh, Jesus never spared them. He could tell the 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 the, the Pharisees. He told them, "You Pharisees, you." You foolish Pharisees, you think that you will, you don't want to go to heaven and yet you don't want other people to go. 
He was so, so, so stunned on these people. And even people, Paul, he, ex, he talked and told them. I remember when Paul went to Athens and he was telling people, repent from your evil ways, from worshiping these idols that you're worshiping. Right now, today, if you tell Catholics what you're worshiping is idols, those Marys that you're holding and those things that you're touching and bowing to this thing, they are idols. You'd be told, oh, no, come on, just be easy on these guys. Be easy on what? On sin? Can you be easy on sin? You see your brother is sleeping in the bedroom and the, and the house is on fire and you know very well he doesn't want to be uh, woken up. And the house is on fire and then you say, I don't want to walk, wake him up. You see, he will know it by himself. You know, I'll just put an alarm and then he will hear. Come on, go and shake him and tell him the house is on fire. You'll burn. That's exactly how uh, preaching should be. Go and tell someone, you will burn. Hell is coming. Jesus is coming soon. And you're there. You're just still telling your brother, it's okay. He will, he will choose the way, whatever he thinks. It's okay. He will think by himself. These people are asleep. And if you tell someone who is asleep, wake up, you wake them up and you don't tell them which door to use or which window to, to, to run through. They will wake up and they'll go towards the fire because they have been lost and they don't know where to go. If you tell people, Jesus says, you tell them, Jesus says, believe the gospel. And you don't tell them that they are in sin and this is come out from this and go to this. Then you're not preaching to them. You should just tell them, you see, God is good. God loves all of us. But you know, whenever you do something wrong, just uh, make sure it's not wrong. And don't tell them you are doing something wrong. Come from the wrong thing to the right thing. Then you're not preaching to them. You're wasting time. So now let's see. Let's see. Revelation 13, 3. It says, and I saw one of his heads as it was were wounded to death and his deadly wound was healed and all the world wandered after the beasts and they worshiped the dragon which gave power unto the beast and they worshiped the beast saying, who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? You see, people will worship this dragon because of what? Because of the, you know, the many miracles and the what, what, what. Look at verse five. And there was given unto him a mouth <laughs> he will be speaking some, some things, speaking great things and blasphemies and powers given unto him to continue 40 and two months. These are the last days, the days of Noah. See, the Bible is coming clear. Many people are deceived. You just hear some words from great people, politicians, and all of a sudden you're believing science more than Jesus. Yeah, Just the other day you were saying, oh, Jesus heals today. Oh, the government heal, scientists they heal, scientists they heal. It's not Jesus anymore. You are saying Jesus heals, now he's scientists heal. Put your faith and trust in the scientists. And you will see from next week, most of the churches, this is exactly what they'll be doing. That's exactly what they'll be doing. Look at, if your church pastor, you'll be telling people, make a straight line here. You see, we have to trust this, our scientists. Trust our scientists, eh? Is this a normal pastor? Is a fake Chatterland pastor is a fake pastor. He doesn't really understand what he's doing. When did we have to change the message of the cross to a message of another thing? Just the other day, people were talking about, oh, God heals, Jesus heals. They lay your new hands, you fall down. Hey, you've been healed, my brother. Now, every pastor, he has, a, I don't know, they have entered in some cocoons and all of them, they, they, Oh, they trust it. Oh, our scientists, when will they come? Oh, we are waiting. We are looking at the airport. When will they drop those things? We really want to have them. They're really good. And you cannot even do research and see what you're getting into. You're a foolish, reprobate, liar, false teacher who doesn't know what he's doing. And you're a blind person leading other blind people, leading other blind people to hell. And you will all perish because you are fools. Now, this is mass deception, which is happening. People have to understand this and they have to open up their minds. And number six, what else was happening in the times of Noah? If you have just joined us, just go through this video over and over. It's full of things that, man, you'll understand we're in the times of Noah. Now, number six, the Bible says in the times of Noah that very few people were saved. So <laughs> also... Even right now, not very many people will be saved. For those who think that uh, all of us, because we're in church, will be saved, you're fooling yourself. In the times of Noah, few people were saved. Now, look at this. 
the times of Noah, Genesis 6, 18. Let's see how many people were saved in the times of Noah. 6, 18, it says, uh, uh, no, uh, yes, 6, verses 18. But with thee I will establish my two covenant, and thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons and thy wife and thy son's wife with thee. This is God talking to Noah. Eight people only were saved in the times of Noah because every other person had fallen away. They had already believed in other things. Right now, if you stop, stop someone and tell them, hey, pastor, tell me, how is someone saved? Just go to your pastor and ask them that question. How is someone saved? Most of those pastors, they will tell you, ah, you see, you, you have to say this prayer, you know, Jesus come into your heart, you know, you have to repeat some uh, prayer. You, you, and you ask them, where is the gospel? Where do you find the gospel in the Bible? Many of them will tell you, uh, you see, the whole Bible is the gospel. Come on, the whole Bible is not the gospel. The Bible is all for you to learn, but it's not directed to you. God told one man in the Bible to build an ark, Noah. Is that message to you? No. Are you supposed to go and build an ark? No. God directed another man and he said, gave a command, go and kill your son, sacrifice your son for me. Are you supposed to go and sacrifice? No, that message was for Abraham, but it's for us to learn. God, in the time of Moses, he told people, this is how you'll be saved. This is how you'll be uh, cleansed um, uh, from your sins. This is how you'll be whatever. You, if you sin, you have to go and take an animal, an, an animal to the altar, you know, cut the throat, pour the blood on the altar. And is that message to us right now? Should we go carrying animals and going and killing them on the altar? Is that our message? No. Right now, our lamb is Jesus Christ. So when you ask them, where is the gospel in the Bible? Others will tell you John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. No, that is a part, is like an explanation of what general you know, salvation is. But the gospel, what exactly is the gospel? The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. And it says this, I'll just speak it so quickly so that you can understand. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel. Listen to what Paul is saying. This is the gospel. Moreover, brethren, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Go and read. These are the exact words. They're not my words. Just, I, I just know it. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which was preached unto you, which you received, and wherein you stand, by which also you are saved if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you believed in vain, for I deliver unto you first that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That is the gospel, my friend. How Jesus died. How did Jesus die? He shed his blood at the cross. Without shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. It is the blood that we, be, we trust for the forgiveness of our sins. Romans 3.25, in whom God has set forth to be a propitiation, to be a propitiation through faith in his blood. You have to have faith in the blood. What do we believe in? People just say, believe in Jesus. What are you believing? in his blood for the forgiveness of sins. So if you go to your church and somebody doesn't tell you the gospel, then my friend, run, 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 like you could ever think about. So only eight people in the times of Noah were saved, okay? Only eight people were saved. Now look at today. <laughs> Do you think everybody's going to heaven? No, 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 no. Let's see what the Bible says. In Luke 13, 23, it tells us exactly what's going to happen. Luke, the book of Luke 13, 13, 23 uh, to 24, it tells us something here. Strive to enter in at the straight gate. Strive. What is striving? You know, force yourself in. Try as much as you can. Strive to enter, enter in at the straight gate. For many... I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. These are God's words. They're not my words. Many, 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 many will seek, will think that they are going to heaven, but they are not going anywhere. They're just, <laughs> you just waste your time in church. You go around and around, but you're going nowhere, my friend. Unless you understand what is the narrow gate. The narrow gate. What is the gate? Jesus said, I am the way. I am the way. And how are you going to enter through Jesus? 
How are you going to use Jesus to enter to heaven? Because the only way you can enter through Jesus is through him imputing his righteousness on you. It's like the only way you can enter to God the Father is if Jesus comes with his court and tells you, Keith, where are these courts? Because you cannot enter there. It's too glorious. You can't enter there with your, you know, with your sinful life. Let me impute righteousness on you. Get inside. Unless Jesus does that for you, my friend, you're going nowhere. You're just wasting your time in church, giving tithes, giving seeds, giving, planting these, planting things which will never grow. Unless Jesus imputes in righteousness to you. And how does he impute his righteousness to you? When you believe in him, Jesus came, he died for your sins. He died. You are the one who was supposed to die for those sins. But Jesus said, oh, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't kill Keith. Eh? Let, me, let me die for his sake. And then the judge asks, okay, Keith, do you want to trust that this Jesus who is dying, he's dying on your behalf? Yes, I trust with all my heart that this guy, Jesus, who is dying, he's dying for my part. The blood that is shedding is supposed to be my blood which is being shed because I am a sinner, I am filthy, I'm useless. The only person who can take me that can save me is Jesus because Jesus, why Jesus? Because Jesus is holy. He never committed any sin, even one day. He came here, he lived as man, he, co he, co he fulfilled the whole law, he did everything and he never sinned once. The Bible says Jesus did not come to destroy, but to fulfill the law. So if Jesus came and he fulfilled the law, how did he fulfill it? He stayed all through without sinning one day. And he fulfilled the whole law. And you will hear SDA, SDA people, they, they are called Seventh Day. They are saying, oh, you see, we have to follow the law, my friend. Do you think you can enter with your righteousness to heaven? Do you think because you fulfill the law right now, you'll enter to heaven? There are 613 laws and Jesus broke none. And right now what we are doing, we are picking his fulfillment of the law and putting it on ourselves and then entering heaven. Hey, when God looks at you, he, see, he, he looks at you, he sees Jesus in you as you enter. He doesn't see the filthy reprobate person who is trying to fulfill the law by himself and thinking, no, I have done everything. I've not lied to anyone. No, I, I want to enter heaven. Do you know what the book of Isaiah says? Our righteousness is as filthy rags unto God. Whatever you think you've done so good, it's so filthy to God that he doesn't even want to look at you. It smells like dung. Paul says our righteousness is like dung to God. So you, 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 you think that you will enter heaven like that? You have to get righteousness of Christ through believing and trusting his blood. Because the Bible says in Ephesians 2, 8, 5, 8, 9, it says, for by grace are you saved through faith. It's not of yourselves. It's not of your own righteousness, lest you should boast. For those who say, ah, oh, I'm so clean. I'm so good. Sabbath day and Mormons and those other weird, weird churches. And they say, hey, because you are fulfilling the law. Now we are really, really good. We are really, really good. I, I think I fulfilled the law. You didn't lie yesterday. No, I didn't lie. Oh, you're really righteous then you're going nowhere. You try to go to heaven with your own works, your own righteousness. Huh? You can never get in with your own righteousness. The only way you can get to heaven is through Christ's righteousness, all right? So Jesus is saying here, he's saying here, let me go back again. Luke 13, 23, it's saying here, uh, 13 verses, uh, where is it? 23 to 24. Then said one unto him, Lord, are there few that be saved. Listen to what he's saying. Are there few that be saved? And he said unto them, strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter and shall not be able. Okay. Many, many, many people will try to enter, but it will not be able. Okay. Because of what? Lawlessness, grudges, hatred, sexual perversion, deception, idol worship, people worshiping pastors instead of worshiping God. Look at these churches of these papa papa guys. Huh? Look at uh, Bushiri's church. Look at uh, all these churches where they always say, this is my daddy, this is my father. My father, oh, you're my, my father. Now, if Jesus himself, he said, call no one here on earth, father, for you have only one father and he's in heaven. You think because of you call Bushiri your father, then you're going to heaven? <laughs> You'll think you're joking. 
So keep on calling these pastors your father. Then when you get to uh, at the door of heaven, eh, Jesus will ask you, so was I your father? I was uh, Bushiri and was uh, those other prophets and were all those Lucy Natasha's. W were they your prophets? Were they your, your father and your mother? Mm -hmm. So did you believe in them or did you believe what I had told you in the gospel? Those are only people that I sent to tell you the word. Why did you idolize them? Because idol worship comes in many ways. You idolize someone so much that you forget God. You put him up high above God and that becomes idol worship. Let's see, Matthew 7, 13. The same thing being spoken about, 7, 13. Matthew 7, uh, 7, 13. Mm, it says, enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in their it. Because straight is the gate, listen to this, straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. And few there be that find it. Are you among as the people who find, have found the way? Are you among the people who have really realized that, this is the way. So the way is Jesus. The way is believing in the blood of Jesus. Are you among those people who have understood that that narrow way? Because many people think just because I am a member of a church, a big church in Rome, because I'm a member of this church, this church has saved me. This church has not saved you. This church is just confusing you. And because they want you to go together with them to hell, that's the much they are confusing you. They tell you, don't even read the Bible. The priest will read the Bible for you. And we know the Bible says here, 2 Timothy 2.15, study to show thyself approved. A workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. The Bible is saying, study, but you don't want to study. You just want to say, mm, let it be the way it will be. Then save yourself. Now look at Matthew 24, 13. What does it say? Matthew 24, Matthew 24, uh, 13. Uh, 24, 13. Is it my, yes, 24, 13. But uh, I don't know. I think I've missed that verse. I don't know where it is, but let me paraphrase because I'm not seeing this verse. There is a verse which says, many are called, but few are chosen. I don't know if it's Matthew or uh, uh, Luke. Many are called, but few are chosen. Now, many, many, God has called every one of us. He has called every one of us. He has predestined us for salvation. He Predestination does not mean what uh, the, the Calvinists believe in. The Calvinists, they say that some people are destined for salvation, others were destined for hell. No, that's, that's a lie. Predestination means that you are destined, everything was set for you to be saved. Jesus has already died for you. Everything was, it's like if you have two children, and I gave this example sometime, you have two, two sons and you are a lawyer and you predestinate everything for them. You choose everything for them that you want them to become lawyers. You take them to law school. You make them, their friends are lawyers. You know, you take them to law trips. You do everything. Give them books. But one son decides, fine, I will follow my daddy and I'll be a lawyer. Another one says, mm, I don't want that. I want to be a musician. This child was already predestined to become a lawyer, but he refused. All right, he refused. He said, mm, I don't want that. So when people are being chosen, hey, that's a lawyer, come up here. And that one is not a lawyer. That's exactly, many are called, everybody's predestined. We are all predestined because we have Jesus dying for our sins. He took the sin of the world, but few, very few accept that. And they say, I want to do what is right. Few are chosen, okay? Few are chosen, okay? So now let's see. Um, in the book of uh, the Luke 18.8, Luke 18.8, it says, it says something here, Luke 18, 18 verse 8, it says, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily, okay? Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? Are you hearing that? When the Son of Man comes, will he find faith in the earth? Because people are gone faithless. They have no faith. Faith in what? Faith in the blood. They only have a form of godliness, but they deny the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. They say, oh, just tell us everything else, but don't tell us about the blood of Jesus. No, no, don't tell us about the blood. 
We don't want to hear about the blood. I had Miles Monroe, the late, he was saying, people are not worried about blood and crows and all those kind of, tell them how they will, you know, make it through the day tomorrow. They want prosperity. And it's very good before you trust someone, just go and do a backup check. Just ask people, are those things that I hear about this pastor really true? And what I hear about this church and their false doctrines are really, are they really true? Why? Because God will always raise someone to tell you, hey, my friend, there is no God there. Just <laughs> run away. Before you put all your trust in some guys, you put all your trust in the, remember where there is no God, God will always raise someone to tell you. Look at the time when Jesus died and he resurrected. And these people are running to the tomb and to try and check, where is Jesus? We want, we have heard Jesus is here. The way people are running to church, you have heard Jesus is here. There were two angels at the door of that tomb and they were saying, come on guys, Jesus is not here. <laughs> Stay away. He's not here. The same way, some churches that you're running to, God is setting some people and telling you, Jesus is not here. He's not here. He's making noise. He's not here. He's not. Run. Go away. Go back. But you're saying, oh, my papa, my papa, uh, I receive papa. I see the much receiving that people do, say, trying to receive from people who are really empty. They have nothing to offer, but you're there saying, I receive. What are you receiving? What are you receiving? And they have nothing to offer. You're receiving emptiness, air, or demons. What are you receiving? These people have nothing. You have been warned and warned and warned that there is no God here. And the Bible tells us here, when the son of man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? Or will you be running after fake papas? It's all up to you. Save yourself. Are you seeing the point? So now, this is exactly what was happening in the times of Noah. It's exactly what was happening in the times of Noah. Now, as I finish... I already promised you that I'll tell you something concerning what is really happening right now. And let's go to the book of uh, the book of Second Thessalonians here. And I want us to dissect that book so that you can be able to see exactly what is happening in the world right now. Second Thessalonians 2 verse 1, it says, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by the gathering together unto him. Now this coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, he's coming to gather us together. Jesus is coming, the, 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 the coming that he will not touch the ground, people will not see him here, but he will be coming to the skies and gather us all together in the rapture. This is not the second coming of Jesus. He's talking about the rapture of the church. Listen, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, okay, Verse 2, that you be not soon shaken in mind or troubled neither by spirit nor by word nor by later as from us that the day of Christ is at hand. Don't be worried. You know, those people tell you, hey, Jesus has already come. Rapture has already happened. No, don't worry. Relax. Paul is saying, relax. Let no man deceive you by any means. And then he says, for that day, the day of the gathering together, the day of the rapture shall not come until, listen, it will come when? For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, falling away first, that the man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. Now, these people, they are falling away. Someone who is falling, he must be, have been standing at a higher ground. This person was standing at a higher ground, at a place where probably he can be redeemed. He can, let's think, let's take a scenario. There is a lot of flood and the houses are full of water down here. And then you jump and you go to the roof and you're staying there. You're at a higher ground. Now, when you're there at the higher ground, you have not been saved yet, but you're at a place where a chopper can come and then pick you up and then you're saved from that flood. What if, you fall away from that roof and fall into the water, you cannot be saved. Probably the water, there are crocodiles, there are things, there are alligators which have already come. So now people who have been saying, staying on top of the roof, they will fall away into something. Look at this. People, it doesn't say that, uh, okay, let, let me just read this. I, I want to put it so clear. That day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, that the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. So they will fall away from grace. They'll fall away from the aspect and the, the place where they could have been saved. But now they fall away. Look at this. 
the, uh, and then the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalted himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he is God, seated in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Now look at this. People will fall away, and they fall away into the son of perdition. And this son of perdition will sit at the temple of God and show himself that he's God. Now, look at this. The Bible tells us we are the temple of God. Christ dwells in us. So if we fall away, we are falling away into some way that we cannot be redeemed. And then Satan, because he's the thief, is the son of perdition. He sits in us. And then when he sits in us, he declares himself that he's God. Now, what, what on earth? can really make people fall away from grace when they're still alive. Remember the Bible said, as long as you're alive, you can be redeemed. But what is it that's so big, which makes people that they can never be saved? They fall away absolutely, they cannot be saved. Look at what is happening right now. Look at exactly what is happening. Think about this thing which is coming, which people have already started receiving. Look about it. Have you heard that it is changing who you are? It is changing you to be another thing. Just go do your own research. I don't want to explain so much here because I don't want censorship. But let me explain to you. Have you realized that it's changing who you are? And when it changes who you are, you become another creature. You are no longer a human being because Jesus died for a human being. But when you are changed and you become a GMO, you become another creature which nobody can explain what it is. Do you think Jesus came to save robots? Ask yourself, do you think Jesus died for robots? So why do you want to become one? Do you think Jesus was so, was so happy by the people of Noah when they changed themselves, the, 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 the fallen angels, they slept with the daughters of men and the daughters of men, instead of giving back to human beings, they gave back to some giants. God destroyed all of them. And those giants and the daughters of men, they were still alive. They never died. They were alive. Why were they not redeemed? Why were they not saved? Because they had fallen from grace. They fell from what was supposed to be. And this is happening in our time right now. We are seeing something which is being brought that now people, when they, they get this, there'll be something different. Go and do your research. Go, YouTube is there, online is there, and it is it will explain you. See, so Satan will sit in this temple. This temple, our bodies are the temple of God. Remember ye not, verse 5, remember ye not that when I was with yet with you, I told you these things. I told you they would happen. And now you know what withhold it, that he might be revealed in his time. Who is being revealed? <laughs> Satan, he's about to be revealed. He's about to be seen. Wow, you mean these people? Because when he, Satan comes in you, you start behaving differently. All of a sudden, you have, you, you have no mercy, no conscience. All of a sudden, you have fallen from grace. Everything to you is just satanic. You are alive, yes, but everything has changed. Satan starts being revealed. Number seven, for the mystery of iniquity does already work. Only he who let, now let it will let until he be taken out of the way. Now, see, this mystery of lawlessness has always been there. These things have always been there. Different stuff have always been there and people have always been doing creepy things, selling their souls to the devil, doing this and that in hidden places, worshiping the Satan in different places. But now all of a sudden, this will be revealed. All of a sudden, it will be revealed. And then now people will fall from grace from the way that they could have been saved. Remember, in Revelation 13, verse, uh, 13, uh, verse 16, I think, 18, it says about the mark of the beasts. The mark will be on your right hand or in your forehead. You'll be forced to receive a mark. Are you seeing something which is happening right now? Are you seeing people being forced into getting something? Are you seeing that whosoever will not get this mark cannot be able to buy or sell? Are you seeing what is happening in Israel? You cannot go into a supermarket. You cannot even sit at the bridge. You cannot go even to a place and buy anything or sell anything unless you have received this thing. Is that making sense to you? Are you seeing the end times, my friends? Are you, are you seeing these days? I don't know what to explain. Unless if you're really so blind, these things are happening. And they are saying very soon, you'll not be able to travel. You'll not be able to do anything without 
this thing. So now look at look at where we are. People will fall away, and many, 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 many Christians will fall away to this deception. They'll fall away to this lie. And I'll show you here because the Bible is saying, listen, verse 8. And then shall that wicked be revealed after people have gotten this thing. Many, 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 many people have received this and they are put now Satan into them, this temple of God. They have changed it into the temple of Satan. Then that wicked will be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy the brightness of his coming. Look at verse 9. Even him who is coming, who, the Antichrist, is after the working of Satan. The Antichrist is after the working of Satan. With all power and signs and lying wonders, okay? And with all deceivableness. Are you seeing the deception which is happening in the world? Deception is so much. With all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth that they may be saved. These people did not want the truth. They were just staying in that place. You see, they were staying at a good place where they can be saved, but they were they never wanted the truth. They know they are at a place where they can be redeemed. Oh, Jesus loved me. Oh, Jesus loved me. But then they never wanted the truth. They never wanted to know, how can I give myself fully to God? They say, I don't want to hear the truth. I don't. Just tell us some fables. Just tell us some uh, fake things. Eh? We go to church Sunday to celebrate, you know, sing some songs, enjoy. But they never wanted the truth. So these are the people who will be deceived because they refuse the love of the truth. They refuse to know what is exactly the gospel. They didn't want to know what is the gospel. They say, oh, I, I rather stay in my own, you know, the way I know, the way I know about salvation. Let me just stay like that. Come on, Keith, don't tell us that, you know, the blood of Jesus. Don't, we don't want those blood stuff and just tell us good things. How we'll be great. How we'll make it. How we'll be rich. How we'll be buy cars how we'll buy big houses. Just tell us some prosperity nonsense. That is exactly what they wanted. They did not want the truth. And the truth is that Jesus died for your sins. He did not die so that you become rich. I had uh, uh, Paula White saying, Jesus died so that you become rich. <laughs> That's a lie. They want those riches. And let me tell you, these people who are, uh, uh, did not want the truth, this is what will happen. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. Verse 11, listen to this. For this cause shall God send them a strong delusion that they should believe a lie. So God is saying he will send them a strong delusion. Now, what is a delusion? It's a mental disorder. People will have a mental disorder. All of a sudden, you're telling people, when you take this, you're going to die. They tell you, no, I don't believe. You know, we have been told, the experts told us, the experts told us that is really good, but it was, it was, they, they, they tested it. It's okay. They told, strong delusion. You tell him, this is the evidence, my friend. Look here. It says it will kill you. Look here. It says this. Look here. But they can't see. They have a strong delusion. Their eyes, they have eyes which you don't see, ears which can't hear. They don't understand themselves. They're just there saying, but we were told. He told us that is okay. Everyone said it's okay. But I, I, I thought, but we are all of us now. Strong delusion. It's like God is saying, this is what you wanted. You love lies so much. Fine. I give you the lies. I give you the lies. Continue with your lies. Do whatever you may want. This is a strong delusion. Now be lied 100% that they should believe a lie. Verse 12, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. All these people who believed a lie, they will be damned. Damned in hell. Damned means they will be finished. They will be damned, all these people. They, they do whatever they do and they get finished out of this strong delusion. They believed a lie and then all of a sudden they are damned because they loved unrighteousness. And then Paul tells us something here in verse 13. But we are bound to give thanks always for God, uh, to God always for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God has from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirits and believe of the truth. So you have been sanctified by faith, but people don't want this sanctification. They want anything else apart from the blood. But Paul tells us, thank God, we thank God for you because you have been sanctified, all right, of the spirit and believe of the truth. Whereunto he called you 
by our gospel. So you are called by the gospel. You are not called by tithe. You are not called by baptism. You are not called by giving to the poor and helping the needy. You are not called because you are a good man, a noble character. You are not called because you did anything good. They, you are not called because you are a Sunday school teacher. You are not called by anything, but you are called by our gospel, the gospel which is in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, which I've told you all about Christ dying for your sins. You believing that Jesus died for my sins. I was to die, but he died for me. You believe that, and that is what has called you, to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast. Listen to what Paul is saying. He's saying, stand fast and hold the traditions which you have been taught, whether by word or by our epistle. He's saying, Hold those traditions. Don't change. Don't start doing other things. Don't start believing in other things that you don't understand. Somebody comes and saying, I have a new revelation. God told me. Run away from people who say God told me because in most cases, they are liars. God told me this. Why did he not tell me first? It's like somebody comes and tells a woman, hey, you know, God told me to marry you. I just, if I'm that lady, I will tell that, that, that guy, okay, wait for him to tell me also. You see, God told me this, God told, you're running away from the traditions that you learn by word or by letter. Word is the word of God, which was spoken by the prophets back then. Or by letter, which is spoken by Paul, the letters of Paul, okay? He's mm, saying, and all the traditions which you have been taught, whether by word or by epistle, now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which has loved us and has given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace. Comfort your heart and establish you in every good word and work. So guys, do not be deceived. Do not be deceived by what is really happening. Don't, don't listen to other things. Don't listen to uh, fables. Don't listen to other stuff. Just believe and understand that we are living in the end times. We are living in the times of Noah. And it's happening. We are here. I know so many people might hear this and they may just think and say, let it be. You know, whatever it is, what it is. It's okay. But at least the Bible tells me if the watchman sees the sword coming and he does not warn people, then that sword comes and kills people. The blood of those people is counted on him. But if he tells people and by their own wish, they don't want to hear and the sword comes and kills those people, then the blood is not on that watchman. I think I can thank God because at least I've spoken my part. You do your thing. Believe the gospel. Don't believe in these stories and fables which are happening because Jesus loves you so much that he died for you. He did not die that you become rich. He died so that you may be saved. So God bless you guys. See you on Friday. Uh, we always have Bible study every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 9 p.m. Same time, same place. God bless you and have a blessed, blessed time. See ya.